Hello and welcome to ACS Golf and this week's review. Well, I'm looking at this, the Cobra LTD. Now, the reason I'm looking at this driver is if you remember, Bryson DeChambre, when he joined Cobra and signed for Cobra a good few couple of years ago now, in 2019, regarding the driver that he had in the bag, rather than putting in the brand new Rad Speed, which they were currently using, he decided to put in this one from 2015 citing that obviously low spinning whatever it suited his swing more and it made me think well hold on if he put one of these in the bag what why are we looking at putting it in the bag you know if he personally thought it was good enough a couple of years ago to play on tour still then maybe we should be looking at this on the second hand market because it could save us a lot of money and we could ultimately have a very good driver i mean i will say obviously this is just the normal ltd this is not the pro version that he used but it's still with that same idea with the fact that hold on if these guys are still using this equipment and tour why are we every year changing to a new club why are we getting a brand new driver coming out when you know we could be saving ourselves money and, and picking up some older stuff or just keeping the same driver in the bag that we've had for years the faithful thing that still works for us so there you go there's the reason for picking it up now as always Let's have a closer look at this club. I will say I did pick this up £55 to under $70 um, if you're watching from over the U in the US. And it is a little bit battered. But that's what you get sometimes with a second-hand market. We'll go fully into the price when we get an ACS Gold Scale and what you can pick it up for sort of in better condition. So as always, you know, we'll have a closer look at the club. Then I'll talk through all the technology that was in it. Then we'll get down to the range. I'll throw some figures at you. And then we'll go through the ACS Gold Scale. And I'll have a chat to say if I think it is possibly worth picking up this 2015 driver. I mean, eight years old. Quite interesting, to be fair. So make sure you're watching to the end to find out my sort of overall theory about it. Now, do remember, guys, if you're new to the channel, remember to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you do not miss reviews that come out every week on Sunday and a few extra videos as well that I've come here up for you guys in the coming week. So remember to hit that subscribe button to really push for those subscriptions now loads of views loads of watching hours loads of likes loads of comments thank you for all who do that well, let's get those subscriptions up you mean the world to me okay so there you go now let's have a closer look at this club So there you go, a closer look at the club. I really do like the look of this, to be fair. I like the subtle look. You know, I like the black and it's very basic on the top with that little orange Cobra sign there. You know, I like the bottom as well, that spaceport. We'll get into that in a second. I will say the one that uh, the Sombra was using was actually the blacked out version, which looks so all this orange here is actually black, looks even cooler, <laughs> to be fair. Not too sure about the shape itself, but it's very forgiving shape. Really does fill your confidence. I think the pro is obviously a little bit more squash, which I actually prefer. But look wise, I just think it's a very nice club. To be fair, you know, very good. Mine's a bit tightless. You know, not too much apart from well, well obviously at the bottom a lot, but on the top, not too much happening, which is always good. You know, you don't want to get distracted by looking down. Um, not a matte crown though, as you can see there. It is shiny, so there is a lot of reflection. As you saw, because you saw me while well, probably filming this, closer for you to see my reflection in it. So, not a massive fan of that. I prefer matte finishes for myself, just because sometimes on a sunny day you do get blinded. But anyway, moving on to the technology in this club. So, the key technology taking design inspiration from a trip to the International Space Station, the Cobra King LTD drivers features a spaceport. There you go. Spaceport window on the sole that allows Cobra to position the CG, so that center of gravity, lower, while also making its internal technology visible for the first time. So you could actually, when you got this, you could actually take this off. I'm not going to try it myself, just in case I don't manage to get it back on. But the idea is, to be fair, when it's newer as well, actually, is that you can have a look in there and you can see the patterns and technology in there, which I think is a really cool feature. Does it help you play golf? Probably not. But... It's a cool feature and very much, you know, it's all what Cobra do. You know, they always try and do that little cool feature. So, yeah, nice. 
Then moving on to a new TE Extreme, so T Extreme Carbon Composite Crown, which is 20% lighter than standing carbon fiber, to again move the CG lower, so center gravity lower again, and to raise the MOI. So moment, moment of immer, inertia, sorry, moment of inertia. There you go, tongue tie. With the ideas, obviously, more forgiveness. You know, higher MOI, the more forgiveness the club has. Now, the ultra low CG position improves the efficiency of the club at impact for faster ball speed, higher launch angles, and lower spin. Which obviously, lower spin, higher ball flight, you're going to be increasing the distance. The body constructed of a lightweight 811 titanium and a back weight port, there you go, and a 12 gram tungsten weight at the back, again, weight at the back to obviously increase that MOI and obviously that launch attack. As mentioned before, you've got a crown which is 20% lighter. You've also got the loft options as well, where on all sort of Cobras, and you still do it, if I just show you here, obviously you have the tip there. Where you can go from nine degrees all the way up to 12 which is great and it also has a draw setting on it as well which is good so you know if you need to make sure if you've got a slice you can put in a draw setting which is going to help you hopefully sort it out a little bit putting a cup in a draw setting isn't always going to work but you do have the option there so that's quite good if you are a bit of a slice or the ball um Faster swing speeds, they do say, we might be much better suited to the Pro model. Like I said, I've got the LTD, just a normal one, which offers a lower loft, actually. So the Pro model was from 7 to 10 degrees. Um, has also had three fade settings to help optimize launch and obviously more distance. But the idea of a draw setting actually closes the club face, creates more spin, and therefore you're not getting as much distance. So they did have that Pro version there, which, unlike this one, had a fade option. You know to increase get that all baby fade and get more distance so there you go there's all the technology in the club so as you can see they really sort of built on the idea of that forgiveness they got sort of speed channel around the face as well which they had in there you know which then built into that sort of cnc milled face they had in the future but basically a lot of technology in this club a lot put into it a lot of thought you know with the idea it's going to go far and it's a bomber so there you go there's all the technology you know just we'll quickly add obviously with cobra obviously all the shafts really good um i've gone aldi adila adila the name of it but there you go you know stiff as well for me 65 stiff which is a perfect shaft for me so really happy for that to really help with obviously the the testing of it so there you go there's all the technology in this club now let's get to the range, throw some figures at you, and then get back for the ACS Golf Scale. And we'll run through all of that, and then I'll give you my overall opinion of it. Okay? We'll see you back here in a bit. So here I am down the range with the club. Now one thing I will say before I jump into the figures for you is I actually really enjoyed hitting this club. Um, I just It's one of those ones sometimes where it's easy to hit, it feels nice. It's just fun to hit, no pressure with it which is just great really, because when it comes down to golf, you know, if you're fun and it's enjoyable to hit a club, then, you know, it's obviously, it's gonna go in a bag and you're gonna have a good time with it. Now, going to those figures, on average, total carry was 205 yards, total distance was 245 yards, ball speed was 148 miles per hour, launch angle nine degrees and height 43 feet. Now, for me, I'd want that sort of more, distance speed around on average 250 yards and ball speed 150 so it was a little bit down from what i'd want um there were a few shots though that did get over that 250 mark i did have one that was 260 and 151 miles per hour ball speed um so it was a little bit shy of the total distance but one thing i will say about it is it was very consistent i didn't really have any big pull pushes i didn't really have any big slices it was all very consistent and like I said before, easy to hit. So majority of the time, even though the ball wasn't going as far as I possibly wanted it to, I was feeling that I could find a fairway with this club very easily. So there you go. Not bad, not great when we go into it. So let's jump straight into the ACS Golf Scale and go straight into distance. If you're new to this channel, between one to five, for each category, five is the best, one is the worst, okay? So we're going to the distance, as I mentioned before, for me, 
with a driver, I'd be expecting to get that sort of 250 plus for it to be really, you know, quite good at distance. Anything above that on average is great. Anything below that isn't bad, but not brilliant. And, you know, coming out on average 245 total distance, not the end of the world. Ball speed 148 is near that 150 mark, to be fair. So maybe, you know, with a bit more tinkering and stuff, I probably could push that 250. But at the moment, that 245, don't get me wrong, that, you know, one that I actually crushed, 151 miles per hour ball speed in that 260. Total distance, that was great. So we we're close to it, but not quite there. So going straight into the distance, I have given this a very solid, and believe me, this isn't bad, a three out of five. A three out of five, so a little bit lower than I was hoping, but nothing to shy away from. You know, three out of five isn't bad, just not as far as I was hoping. So distance-wise, three out of five, not bad, not the end of the world, but not, not blowing my socks off, basically. There you go. Now, moving on to feel. Feel. I've given this a four out of five. I actually really enjoyed hitting this. I found it very easy to hit. I found it quite easy to get into the air. Um, you know, for someone like me, my swing, generally close the club face and hit down on the ball. You know, on average to get it near that sort of 10 degrees, which I did, but then still have enough spin to sort of get the height as well. I was generally quite happy. I really did find it easy to hit the ball. So I was very happy with that. Very happy with that. Love the feel of it. It's new I was hitting it in the face. Just felt like a nice, solid driver, dependable driver. You know, looking down on it and then hitting it, I was just really happy. You know, I had fun. I had fun. And that's, let's be honest, that's one of the main things when it comes down to golf, is if you're having fun. And I had fun hitting this Cobra LTD, to be fair. I could quite happily just put it in a bag, go out for a round, not really worrying about it and just enjoy myself. I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. So feeling four out of five, happy with it. You know, felt nice off the face, felt really nice off the face to be honest. It's just a nice feeling driver. So there you go, looks. Looks like going at 3.5 out of five. So as I mentioned before, I do like the look of it. I mean, obviously with that port, it looks a little bit weird, but I think that's quite cool. I think it's a good thing. The only reason I'm giving it 3.5 and not Four out of five or above is just that sort of that shape. It's a very friendly shape. It's a very sort of, if you look down at it, it's sort of forgiving shape, you know, with all that weight at the back, that sort of classic sort of pear shape. But I just prefer something a little bit more squatted, slightly different shape. So even though I look down on it and I'm not offended by it, it's not really the shape for me. So that's why it's a 3.5 out of five and not higher. Um, if it was in the black, fully blacked out one might be a bit higher because i did enjoy that but there we go so now, as on forgiveness i've given this a four out of five so i really did think it was a good forgiving club i mean on average like i said ball speed was 148 but i you know only dropped down to the low 140s a few times i didn't find any big drop down i never dropped under the 140 all the ball flights were generally quite similar. It was quite compact. Just a very good, forgiving club. So four out of five, you know, there was never a shock there where I was like, oh my God, that's plummeted out of the sky or, you know, it hasn't gone anywhere or anything like that. So for me, four out of five, very happy with the forgiveness, to be fair, of this club. Now, now on to price, which I think is the pierce the resistance when it comes down to this club. And one of the main things, let's be honest, is about this channel it's always about finding you guys really good deals and i've given this a 4.5 out of 5 now don't get me wrong if you look on sort of golf bidder over here so those second hand shops or like replay golf over in america you're looking under sort of 100 pounds around that 125 dollar mark which to be fair so it starts off there sorry to be fair isn't the end of the world but i've seen a lot of these go for under 60 pounds on ebay so under 70 dollars i mean i picked this one up 55 pounds bit battered don't get me wrong i mean that's just cosmetic there but i've seen good ones go for under that price you know i've seen a few then go maybe 72 pounds so on that 90 dollar mark sort of thing and i've seen one go for 115 which was under 150 dollars which is like brand spanking new <laughs> pretty much never been used um if you go for the black obviously the black is a little bit more expensive because it's a bit more sought after but 
you know, a lot of these clubs are going for under £80, under around that $100 mark. And that's an absolute bargain for me. So like I said, 4.5 out of 5. Absolute bargain. It's not going to be wrong. Like I mentioned, distance isn't great. It's 3 out of 5. But it's forgiving. It's consistent. And it's just fun to hit. Which is one of the main things about golf. It's fun to hit. I've mentioned it before, but it just is. I just had a really fun time hitting it down the range. You know, I could take this club out every weekend and just have a really good time with it. Sure, my mates might outdrive me every now and again, but I'd just be having fun. And that's what golf is about. Let's be honest, we're going out there to have fun. So, yeah. So, there you go. Four out of five. 4.5 out of five for the price. Now, overall, so we've gone through all of that there. I do really think this is an absolute bargain on the second hand market i think like i've mentioned just then get it under that hundred dollar mark get it under that 80 pound mark you're gonna have fun hitting it it's fun it's cool to look at it's a bit quirky with that space port you know and yes it hasn't exactly gone the distance i wanted but it's not far off it's only five yards and you know someone else could pick it up and it could be an absolute flyer best driver use i mean like we said the Chambre put it in his bag because for him it was perfect. So maybe the spin's not quite right for me. And so therefore, I haven't got the most out of it. But it is a great club. Even though it's eight years old, you can pick it up for that price. You won't be disappointed and you'll have a lot of fun with it, to be honest. So do, do keep an eye out on it because oh, it's great. Such a great thing. I do love Cobra clubs. And it's nice that you can, you know, to know that you can go back to 2015 and, you know, still pick up a really fun, easy to hit, decent distance club for a very, very good price on the second hand market. So there you go. There's my review of the Cobra LTD driver. Now, if you like this video, do give it a like. Comment down below if you play with Cobra drivers, you know, which models do you play with? You know, what do you think of them? Have you tried the LTD? I'd love to know. And like I said before, guys, at the beginning of the video, do remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you get more weekly reviews like this coming straight onto your newsfeed. Okay? So there you go, guys. Have a good week. And I'll catch you next week for another ACS Golf Review. Bye-bye. See you then.